Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here. Hit the notification bell. We're doing linear algebra one. This is chapter two matrices. Section 2.4 is determinants and their properties. This lecture, what we're going to do is determinant properties and the methods for computing determinants efficiently. Last time, what we did was cofactor expansion, and we saw that we can cofactor expand to find the determinant along any row or any column. But what we're going to do is we're going to get determinant properties, get us zeros in those determinants cleverly, and then we're going to cofactor along the row that has almost all zeros in it. You'll see the technique after we do it. Let's get to it. All right, properties of determinants. I'm going to list the main three first. These are the ones that you're going to use in the trenches most of the time, and then I'll give you a few other artillery pieces that you can use, but you're not going to use them very often. These are the three main ones. In particular, even though I say the three main ones, please don't use any of them but number three if you have a choice. Number three is the one you should use. Don't use any of the other properties in the book. Mark Solomonovich's book is really extremely good. He's got eight properties. I've narrowed it down in the video to these three. These are the ones you're going to use most of the time, and everyone gets these. Well, this one's not too bad. If you interchange two rows, or two columns, you get a negative on the outside every time you do that. So A, B is on the bottom and C, D is on the top. If I flip those, I get a negative on the outside every time you do it. What property one says. So in rhetoric, if two rows or columns, you're used to row operations. So don't start doing manipulations of column operations right out the gate if you can. But if two rows of a determinant are interchanged, the sign of the determinant is changed to the opposite. What we're saying is when you interchange the two rows, you get a negative on the outside. Property two is that one's not too bad. The only time I would do that is I want a leading one in the top left corner. If I don't have one and I can see one, I would probably interchange it so I get a leading one in the top right, right corner. I'll get a negative and then I won't use these properties again. I'm just going to use this one to eliminate below and this doesn't change the determinant so this will be safe. Property two is if we have a row or columns again, you can do this because remember this is not row operations. These are determinant properties. We're computing a number, a real number. If a row or column of a determinant is multiplied by a factor, so you multiply every entry in the row by a number k, then the determinant is also multiplied by that factor. So basically, in row reduction, you would view this as an equation, and you'd have an equal sign here with your augmented matrix. And then everybody says, well, I have k there. What should I do? I should multiply by 1 over k. And that's not what we're doing here. What it's saying is you have to see that you have k in both of the terms and factor it out. You can't multiply by 1 over k on both sides of the equation because there's no equation there. It's a determinant that we're computing. So factor the k out. You're like, that seems all good, and I can see it here. But what I'm saying is when you have 4 and 6, what that says is this is 2 times 2, and this is 2 times 3. So I can write that as 2 times 2, 3, 1, 3. I've taken the 2 out of that row. You have to take it out. You can't multiply by 1 fourth. That will screw everything. If you want to do that business of multiply by 1 fourth, multiply by 1. Put the 4, 1 fourth in and keep the 4 out, and you'll see that oh, that's what's going to happen. It was the 2 we're taking out. So I would multiply by that, and then it would do the same thing. But the moral is, don't use this property unless you have to. And then when you do, remember, factor things out of the row. Don't try to multiply by 1 over. That's the most common mistake. All right, next. Number 3 is, if a row, or again, column, is replaced with that row added to a multiple of another row, the determinant doesn't change. So that's the safest one. That's the one that we're actually going to need. Finally, the universe lines up where this is the safest operation and it's the one we need to use the most. Good. Try to use number three. Only use number one when you try to get a leading one in the top right corner. If you have to get a leading one and it's the worst case scenario, you, you may have to factor something out to get a leading one. Other than that, you're going to use these two to get a leading one. Once you do that, stop using these, get zeros below it, and then we're going to use cofactor expansion. That will be the idea. So these are the main three. I'm going to list a few more properties which are useful, but you may not use them as often. Now we're going to do a few more determinant properties. Four, five, six are going to be used less often, but if you can see it, they are also useful when I'm computing determinants. The first one says, if any two rows or columns are equal, then the determinant is zero. So if I have A, B, A, B, anytime that happens in any row, again, we have to picture big ones, but for simplicity, I'll use two by twos. If you have this, it's always zero. We're not going to prove any of these results. You can look in a textbook and find these. Most of them aren't too bad. This one is non-trivial. Five says, same thing. Five is an extension of four. It says if you have now not that they're equal to each other, but if you have that they're proportional, so a multiples of each other, one or the other, then the determinant is also zero. So if you have a, b, and then k times a, k times b in the next row, or in the column, that will be zero every time. Another extremely useful property that we use for later on when we do diagonal matrices and all these types of things, eventually we want to have the determinant of a matrix, but then we put it in this clever. You'll see in chapter five, eventually when we get there, we are going to talk about diagonalization of a matrix and then we're going to write it, want to write it like this. 
PDP inverse determinant. And what we want to do is, can I separate those? And yes, that theorem is going to tell me that I'm going to be able to write that as the determinant of P times the determinant of D times the determinant of P minus 1. And then when we do this, we're going to have a property of the determinant of and the inverse of a matrix is 1 over the determinant of the matrix. So these are going to then cancel, and then we get these clever properties when we diagonalize something. Would you rather diagonalize or compute the determinant of a huge matrix which has a bunch of entries, or it'll be equal to the diagonal of a determinant of a matrix which just has entries on the diagonal, which is the product of the diagonal entries, we're going to see. So we do have even more determinant properties, but I'll combine those in the next video with inverse matrices. Let's look at proving some of these properties for 2 by 2 matrices. All right, let's prove one to three for a couple versions of two by two matrices so you can actually see and convince yourself. We state these mathematical things and we spend a lot of time getting our hands dirty and dealing with two by two, three by three matrices and we've seen what these determinants look like and then you start seeing the properties and then we prove them. But it all looks like I'm going to guess horrible rhetoric in some foreign language to you. Here's what a two by two matrix looks like. Here's what the determinant is. It is AD minus BC. Remember, it is the main diagonals multiplied together minus the off diagonals. That's how we compute two by two determinants. Therefore, I already know the determinant of A, if I leave it alone, A, B, C, D that way, its determinant is A, D minus B, C. So now to prove these, all I'm going to do is take three matrices that have the operation that we talked about and then show that it works out the way that the property said. The first one said that if you interchange two rows or columns, I've taken A and I've interchanged row one and two. And that gives me this matrix. What's the determinant of this? Now this is by definition, C times B minus A times D. But cleverly, and here I'll do it actually pre-calculus type stuff. Doesn't matter where you learn this. This actually, and this is what's hard for people. Negative times negative is one. And you're like, yeah, but there's a one here. I'm going to make that negative one times negative CB minus AD. Why did I do that? Because the two negatives, I can factor a negative out of them now. That's going to now equal, when I take that negative out, that's going to be negative one times what do I get here? This will become positive AD minus BC, all, and that's equal to negative the determinant of A. So when I interchange them, yes, I can factor a negative out, and the determinant when I interchange two rows or columns will give me a negative on the outside every time. If you want for yourself, try the other one where I interchange two columns. If starting with A, I flip the columns, that will be a, C, B, D. Compute the determinant of that, you will still get negative the determinant of the original one. For the next property, now what it's saying is if you multiply a row or a column of a matrix by an entry K, you have to multiply the determinant by that value K. Let's see it specifically. We know the determinant of A is A, D minus B, C. What is it here? It is going to be A times K, D minus K, C times B which is all just like the negative one here. I have a K in both terms. I can factor that out. That's K times, what do I have left here? AD minus BC. That is the determinant of A. So that is K times the determinant of A. Coincidentally, a corollary to that or another further property is where they'll try and trick you, so I'll sweet it in here. The determinant of an N by N matrix multiplied by K now is not K the determinant of A because I have to Scalar multiplication, remember, goes into every row. So I have to pull out K out of each of the N rows. So the correct formula is corollary. The determinant of K times an N by N matrix is K to the N times the determinant of the matrix because I have to pull the K out of every row. And if I do that, if I had it here, you would see it. And this is K times the determinant of a two by two matrix. That's the property. Hopefully I added clarity and not removed it. And the last property I really like because we get terms that cancel. This is the weirdest one where you would expect if we we're gonna use this silly term called intuition, which you should stop using with math, you just prove things, you don't use your intuition. I would assume using my intuition, you just, I just said don't do it and I'm gonna use it. And we'll see where it goes wrong. I would assume that this is gonna be the one where it would change stuff because it looks the most complicated. But what we're saying is it doesn't change the determinant at all. When I factor this, I'm gonna get AD minus BC. What do we get? By definition of a two by two determinant, it's this one minus this, which is, a plus KC times D minus C times B plus KD. Now I'll distribute left distribution and right distribution from the axioms of the real numbers. That's going to give me AD plus KCD minus CB minus KCD. And those cancel and I get oh, AD minus BC, which is determinant unchanged. That's the safest rule. You should probably use it the most. Use these other ones if you can. Maybe use four, five, six ones in a while, but three is the bee's knees. 
Please subscribe right here. Hit the notification bell. I'll see you next time.